Hello everybody, I'm Ian Gibson, he's Will Crosby, and this is Minecraft. Will, I haven't seen you in a while, how's the things? How are the things? Uh, the, th the things have been good. How how are your things? Things also good. Let's get right down to Minecraft. This this is like a just chatting Minecraft chill sesh. I feel like we both have a lot to talk about. So let's just, you know, hop into our community server. Um, if you all want to join the server, hint, hint, hubba bubba. Just join our community Discord. It has all the information there. Uh, we also have a cool system set up where the in-game chat is synced with the Discord channel chat. So it's nice and easy to send information back and forth between the two. Um, you should see that information in the chat. Maybe. Possibly. Maybe. Probably. Uh, it looks like no. Let's see if the other command works. Oh, YouTube works. I don't know. Anyways, uh, <laughs> <laughs> who cares? Um, so we are going to, uh, Will, you're, I think you may have to be in charge of chat. Um, yeah, I got it open. Oh, well, you know what I can do is I guess I can show it on. You with all your infinite monitors can't have chat up. It's, you know, a couple things you find out. Number one is that most, um, NVIDIA cards support a maximum of four displays, even though some of them have five and up to six inputs or outputs. Um, and it's like, why are you giving me five display outputs if you're not going to support that? Um, the other thing you realize is that you get wonky stuff with four monitors where for some reason, anytime I go full screen on my main monitor, one of my monitors always minimizes whatever's on that screen. It's real wonky. Gotcha. Who cares? We're playing Minecraft. Um, so, Will, it's been a while. It's been How a you while. Been? How you been? I've been good. Um, yeah, when was the... Uh, Christmas was good. Um, yeah. Uh, I got some good things. Highlights. Yeah, highlight it for me. Um, I got a... Uh, it's not USB powered, but I say USB powered because it's tiny and it only has a tiny AC adapter that charge powers it. But I got a mm -hmm. uh, USB powered uh, soldering iron, so it's like a tiny little soldering iron with a soldering iron with an OLED display on it for like temperature. Oh, and that, you that is literally nice. just like wall plug it and use it, and you don't yeah. need like the big heavy stand and the crank on it. Well, you probably. Stuff. You probably still need the sand, but at least you don't have to worry about the stupid wire when you're soldering. Yeah, yeah, you don't. Yeah, yeah you don't have that big bulky yeah. setup. That oh, well, that's nice. Stuff. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, I also got a new backpack from Karen, which Disgust. I've been wanting a new backpack. Disgusting. Um, and <laughs> something I forgot I put on my Christmas list. The uh, collector's edition of the guidebook for one Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, oh. Which is quite detailed. Um, so it's kind of cool looking through that. I was trying to check screenshots to see if there's any T-posing people <laughs> in it. <laughs> but, uh, I haven't really noticed. Uh, but I did discover an entire side character I've never met who has tons of missions that I didn't know existed. So What's their name? Uh, Ellie? It's Carrie? Carry? Yeah. yeah they like they're on a boat also i find it stupid not to rant about cyberpunk for a second here because i know we'll talk about it later actually no i'll save it for later um I'm trying to think if i got anything else crazy for christmas um i didn't get as many i didn't get that many books um what'd you say oh yes karen shouting out the highlights ice cube trays very excited about those. Um, okay. Congratulations on the ice cube trays. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are they specialty ice cube trays or are they just... Well, one of them is like the big giant whiskey cubes. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're pretty great. Um, which are in my drink right now and they just stay they stay there for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah. What? How was your Christmas? How um, was your damaged product you got? <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we we told this on stream. Uh, basically, Maggie, my fiance, had a 
gift for me delivered. She opened it up and she thought it had been previously opened and possibly damaged. And she wanted my opinion on it, but she didn't want to show it to me. So I had her call Will and show through video chat what it was. It is a giant master grade Gunpla from uh, Seed. And um, it's it's not just a master grade. It's a giant master grade. Um, it's huge. But what we did was we we opened it up and her and I, we went through it and the manual has a list of all the runners that are in it. So we just did that and it has everything in it, which is great. Good. Um, yeah, she showed it to me and it was like, she's like, it's not shrink wrapped. And in my brain, I'm like, they're not, I don't think they're normally. Yeah, normally they're not. They just have like a plastic band around them. Yeah. And then like the corner was broken and all the bags. But I was like, it really doesn't look like. It looks like it like might have gotten just br not like the glue didn't set on the holder or something like on the box. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was funny, and then I was like stressing. I was like, "What if it? Oh God, what what if I do?" Oh no! And I was like, "Oh no, I think I'm, I think it's fine." Oh no! Oh no! Oh, oh I did uh, another highlight. Uh, I got some extra thin uh, Tamia glue. Tamia. Tamia. I believe it's Tamia. Oh yeah, that I've stuff. Never pronounced it. Although I, I've told you this, the extra thin is good, but honestly, like ninety nine percent of the time now, I use the extra thin quick setting. It, um, it, is that the same? Is this? Do they make that as well? Yeah, they look almost identical. It's just that one says quick setting on it, and it actually it, it does might set be the a quick lot quicker. Setting. Yeah, I haven't actually. I sent my dad a link, and I think it was the quick setting. Um, that stuff's great. There's definitely instances where you don't want to use the quick setting, but like 99% of the time I'm like, these two pieces go together and they just yeah. slam it. And especially if you're using like a really nice kit, like a Tamiya kit where the pieces will fit flush, it's perfect um, because it just, it literally just capillary action seeps between yeah. the seams. Oh, I can't believe I even, I forgot about this. So my dad got me a lot of like model making stuff. So he got me that glue and then he also got me, actually is it nearby? No, I think it's in the other room. It's this giant metal square with raised edges. And it comes with a bunch of magnetic holders. So you place pieces in there yeah. and use the magnet to hold them like against the wall and stuff like that. And then he also got me a couple uh, plastic clamps for that I can use like specifically with my paper models. So they're not metal clamps that are going to be too hard. Um. So I can like hold the paper pieces together. Yeah. Which I'm quite looking forward to using. That sounds good. Yeah. Um Oh, I got Tintin on Blu-ray. Hey, that's uh, a good movie. Was... You know, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not a crazy uh Spielberg fan, but I saw that when it came out in theaters and I was like, you know what? Solid solid adventure movie. It's like really good. Yeah. Or Spielberg and Peter Jackson making a movie together. Oh, I didn't know that it's was Peter like, Jackson. What what did he do to D Wright? Uh I don't actually know. I know Weta was, was a producer. Involved. I think he was producer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that movie is like surprise it's a very good Indiana Jones movie. Yes. Yes, hundred percent though. It's like surprising. Um Karen, why are you near me? Okay, you, you're allowed to do that. Oh, uh, another highlight. I don't know if you've seen this movie. We what we uh, in my family, Master and Commander: The Far Side of the World, is a oh, very popular movie. Um, and we showed Karen it, and she really liked it. It is, I forgot. It is a fantastic movie. Yeah, it's very good. It. It only has a uh, again. I don't trust them very much. Only has a seven point one on IMDb, which is crazy to me because well, that's, that movie that's a user score, right? Yeah, IMDb. That movie is. I you know it's weird that it's that low, it. honestly, because I really can't find anything wrong with it. It does meander a bit, but honestly, while it's meandering, I'm okay with it. Yeah, it's just. Like there's good action. There's I don't know. It's just like, just like great movie. And I'm so sad they did not make because it was supposed to be a franchise. And, yeah. Um, apparently there was a it was either a Vice or someone's article a couple of years ago, or last year about how, like one of their points in the article is like they were kind of 
mad that uh, Pirates of the Caribbean became such a franchise, but this movie didn't. But apparently, Russell Crowe owns the rights to it now, or someone picked up the rights and they want to make another movie. Mm-hmm. Um, which I was reading up the uh, the the ship. I think it's the Rose that they used for the surprise in the like a lot of the shots. Um, yeah, they donated to a museum afterwards with the stipulation that they could borrow it whenever to make movies. Oh, they they built their own replica. It it was a purchased replica. They purchased it for one point five million, fixed it up, and then at the end of the filming, they donated to a maritime museum. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, and while that movie was being Shh. filmed, uh, a different ship was being sa- like was purchased and was being sailed somewhere else. And so they did a lot of shots of that ship far away. So it. Like, that's how they got a bunch of their shots. What'd you mess up? Uh, I messed up the count on this slightly, oh, but the worst. it's not that bad. Um, yeah, anyway, so just to say, for, for, for people watching at home, I'm building a greenhouse. But it's, I've done this once before. It's It ends up just being a headache, but honestly, it's kind of worth it. Where basically you are building... Um, you're building a dome, which requires you to do pixelated circles of different sizes. <laughs> and it becomes... It, it's pretty annoying, honestly. But but when you do it right, it comes out really good. Three. What um? What's the greenhouse for? Throwing things in? Well, I, everybody else has a house, so I was like, maybe I'll do my own house, and at the same time, I'll make it, you know, kind of like a greenhouse. I'll put all the flowers and stuff in here. That's nice. What a nice little idea you had. Why do you sound so surprised by my idea? I don't know. It's just, <sighs> just crazy, you know. Zach said HMS Surprise Replica is in San Diego. He saw it and giggled. Uh, you know, I've been on the um, Constellation, which is oh, one of the you? very no, the Constellation, which is one of the very few things that is nice about Baltimore, is that they have the USS Constellation in their harbor, and you can do tours on it. That's cool. Yeah. We used to, as kids, actually, my dad got me, you know those, like, self-published history books you always see in, like, museums and stuff? I forget the the brand name of them. I'll, I'll look it up after this. Anyways, there was one about Battleship Cove, which is in Massachusetts, which is, uh... Yeah. An old battleship and a bunch of other... Like there's a submarine and PT boats and stuff. We used to always go there as kids, and uh, boy, was it so cool! Like pretending to be on a friggin' ship. Um, yeah, that's so. Is that a, is that a holiday tradition, Master and Commander, or was it just like let's watch a movie, Master and Commander? It, you know, it, it's not really a holiday tradition. Master and Commander is a very my family movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Along li- also, Hunt for Red October is one of those movies. Yeah. Um, and uh, like specifically, not Christmas movies that we watch around Christmas would be those. And there's a couple others like The Train, which is one of my personal favorite movies. What's The uh, Train? It is a 1964 action movie, black and white, starring Burt Lancaster, about um. So in the 40s, the Germans stole a bunch of paintings from Paris. Uh-huh. Quote unquote stole. Uh, well, I mean, stole. they like, stole. Let's be honest. Uh, if, if you go through the effort of conquering a city, I think you get to pillage it a little bit. <laughs> you know, a little bit. Come on. Um, so uh, in reality, uh, this is a real story that happened. Yeah. They put all the paintings on a train and then the con- the engineer and the conductor and everyone drove the train around paris fooling the germans thinking they were going back to germany uh, but they just oh, drove wow. around paris in this big circle so in the movie it's more complicated where like they actually like fake the train stations and all sorts of stuff yeah. um and there's like one maniacal german commander who's like wants the art for all this secretly sort of the good guy got it yeah yeah secretly the good guy you know um but it is a 
fantastic movie. It's one of the last black and white film action movies, 1964. Um, and France was redoing their railroad system, so uh-huh. they were allowed to crash the trains and blow everything up. Phys- like, actually do it. That's the So there's, best. like, an air raid scene where, like, they planted dynamite in the entire place while a train is going through it. And it's That's like, awesome. everything's exploding. It's, oh, it's so good. That's it's a awesome. really good movie. I want to get the Blu-ray, but it's, like, always, like, $50 because they probably made, like, four of them. This criterion, is it a Criterion? No, it's, it's just a, it's just a, probably just a crappy Blu-ray that they. Oh, that stinks. Because if it's Criterion, like, they do, they do half-off sales pretty frequently. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that's our actual holiday movies we usually watch is um, We're No Angels, which is with uh, Humphrey Bogart and two other people. I can't think of their names. And that's a pretty good movie. I think, I don't know if my dad like saw it when he was a kid or something. But uh, it's a relatively unknown Christmas mm. movie, but pretty good. Uh, how was your Christmas? Um, it was good. We didn't go anywhere because pandemic times. Um, Smart. But uh, it was pretty good. You know, we just kind of hung out. Um, I, I took two weeks off work. Still, still off work. Nice. Um, part of that is because like. A lot of people do that. We have PTO expiring, and it's usually dead around the holidays anyway, so I took a lot of time off. Um, it, it was good. Christmas highlights. I got that giant gun plug. Um, the other highlight, I think I, I think I told this to you off stream, but basically what I've been teasing or talking surreptitiously about is I've been working for the last two months on a model by Tamiya of the M10 tank destroyer. And the significance of that is um, the M10 tank destroyer is what my grandfather drove during the Battle of the Bulge in World War II. So Tamiya has a model of that vehicle and the decals they include for that model are the exact, are for the exact unit that my father, my grandfather served in, 634th tank destroyer battalion. So um, the, the tank that the model is based off of was basically in his unit, and you can see that exact tank in various pictures of his unit. So it's not his exact tank, but it's, you know, a tank that he served alongside with. So long story short, my father has been doing a lot of World War II history, and he's actually the one that brought up the model to me. But unbeknownst to him, I had been working on it for the past month, doing the full Monty on it, you know, assembling, gluing, painting, and it, it came out looking fantastic. I did see the pictures. It looked very good. I can't believe how good it came out. Um, I'm going to toot my own horn for a bit. And I hope you understand I don't take this lightly. That is like museum quality. Like if you were at a museum and they had a diorama with, with models, that model would be right there with it. It came out incredibly well. So I would recommend going to Ben Gibson, my Twitter account, and taking a look at those pictures. It came out really well. Uh, we had a bit of a gift to the Magi situation where basically my father, for Christmas, sent me that model. Because <laughs> he, he, he kept talking about it and he's like, oh, Ian puts together models. He probably likes this. So he sent me that model. So I had to video chat him on Christmas Day and be like, hey, I opened the present. Thank you so much. But um, I, I need to show you what I got for you because I wasn't planning to give it to you yet. And I didn't want to ship it. And I showed it to him and he was very surprised. He, he actually ended up, he saw that it had a, a unit number on the tank and he was like i know that tank i have several pictures of it and he sent me several pictures of that exact tank which was pretty cool um so he's very excited about that it's kind of a, a funny little gift to the magi situation i got the gunpla um oh you you know you mentioned the amazon gift list so you do that as well you basically have an amazon wish list and people tend to buy off of that yeah that's usually how my family operates because with so many people, it's it's a lot easier to just do that. Yeah, and nobody knows anybody. You all hate each other, so yeah, got it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so my family does the same thing for me. Um, I set this up a couple of years ago because apparently I'm hard to gift for, which I <laughs> I could kind of see. I have some weird interests, so people are probably just like, I don't know what to get you. Um, so I had a wish list, but the problem was. I get I get some good stuff off that wish list. Um but part of the problem 
is that I didn't update it in time before people started buying me stuff. So, for example, I've been putting books on that list that I want to read. Oh, 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 God. Sorry, the skeletal horse just exploded into multiple... Uh, you need help? Yes, there's... There's multiple skeletons riding horses. Where are Skeletal you? horses fighting me by the pumpkin patch. Coming. I heard the thunder and I was like, <laughs> okay, come towards me. Come towards me. I'm so scared. Oh, they're not engaged. In they combat. were fighting each other. Okay, you ready? Yeah, let's do this. Oh, I bet the horses will like us. Yeah, you want to look up oh, how to a, tame? There's a golden one up here. Okay. Get him. I Oh no. I have a Oh, he takes a lot of health. Oh, I got to get back. I've got a nice crossbow. He's down. Nice. Nice. I yes. have saddles. Yeah. But you should look up what to do with the horses before we Piss him off. Yeah, Cyberlong, we got three horses here. We're gonna we're gonna leave them be. Let me grab saddles. Um Yeah, so th basically the problem I have with the Amazon wish list is I've been putting books on there that I want to read eventually. But the problem is people have just been getting me a lot of get of books over the years. So <laughs> So I now have, uh, basically I have a stack on my bedside table of books that I'm going to read in the order I'm going to read them. It's already like eight books deep, and I got like three or four books for Christmas. So I was like, nice. no more books. I mean, I said this to myself. I was like, hey, no more books, okay? You don't need them so for I, a while. I, on my Amazon, just to let you know how a pro does it, um, I have like, I'm just kidding. I have like 10 different lists. Yeah. So I have one for books, one for video games, one for board games, one for tools, one oh, for tech. And then you put them on the gift list. And they're all private. And then I have one public list that it says Christmas slash birthday. And then I add to that yeah. and, and subtract. See, I, I should be doing that. I kind of have that. Like I have a Gunpla list and I have like a, like I had a subpixel list for stuff I wanted to buy for us for tech. Um, oh, oh cyber. Sure, cyber. Yeah. Where are you? I'm just um, writing my, uh, my skeletal horse. So, uh, yeah, I should... I, I need to... And I, I kind of realized that may be an issue, so I fixed it, like, early December, but I think people had already started buying stuff. But, yeah, I mean, there are books I want to read. I just... I got too many books to read right now. Um, yeah. I did get some great stuff. Maggie made fun of me, but... Uh, I got this... It's basically, like... I don't want to call it industrial strength, but it's basically a giant tube ringer. And you put your toothpaste tube in it, and it's made out of, like, stamped stainless steel. And you just use it to, like, squeeze the toothpaste tube, like, with a little gear. And, that's pretty and Maggie was like, what is this? And I told her what it is, and she was like, that's the stupidest thing. Why did I buy this for you? And I was like, that's why it's on my gift list, because I'm not going to spend that money myself on it, you know? Um, but if somebody wants to spend 20 bucks on me for a gift, then yeah, give me this. And it was great because she was like, this is so stupid. And then I immediately walked into the ba the bathroom where we had a toothpaste tube that was down to the last bits that you couldn't get out by hand. And I just put it in the ringer and got like, f like five squeezes worth out of it. <laughs> I was like, boom, this is why, but it's hilarious. Cause I didn't think about it, but it's like, actually it's like, it's like this big, it's enormous. There's this hefty piece of like junk. Um, Cyber's asking if there's another horse. They should all be by the pumpkin patch, right? Yeah. There's two... I think there's two more. There's one over here. Do you want a saddle, Ian? Um... I mean, I don't... You, they stay on the horse, right? Yeah. So just... just uh, you know what, let me come over. Because there's a command that you need to do. To give me permission to touch your horse. No, I meant there's... I have two saddles. Well, I, I'm saying if you just put them all the horses and then tie the horses up or put them in a pen and then we can all use them. But there's a command you need to do so that I can use a horse that you've tamed. Oh, God. To, like, share the horse. Here, I'll, I'll do it on the llama real quick. No, my horse! Sla you need to do slash give pet. 
I don't think I tamed it though. I don't know how you tame a bone horse. But no, but I mean, if you get off it and then I try and get on it. Oh no, he just got on it. Oh, he got on it. Maybe I don't need to. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm fine with these. It's just the llamas. But I think I, if I, I think you can tame the skeletal mm. horse. You know what? I also have. I picked up uh, iron horse armor from a chest. Yeah, I have gold horse armor, but I don't know how to. Uh oh. Where's my horse? Uh, still on it. Um, so they got that. Um, the gift of the Magi situation is basically my dad. I talked to my dad, and, and he's. I'm gonna return the Tamiya kit and get a different Tamiya kit, which is nice because that Tamiya kit was. It's fantastic. Highly recommend it. Really well done kit. Easy to use. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I got. Uh, I mean, I bought myself some stuff. I was streaming while you were gone, as a man does, and I finally, I, um, what did I do? Give me a second here. So I was practicing for uh, Formula Subpixel. <laughs> yeah, why are you so like set on your horse, Will? Because I was riding it, and then he stole it from me. But you realize there's like four horses over there. Yeah, but this one had the saddle. Don't two of them have two saddles, saddles now? And you you said you, you have two right saddles there. in your inventory. <laughs> but I gave the other one to you. I don't have a saddle. I didn't take a saddle from you. I put it on the horse for you, and that's why you got on the horse. Well, then just get on that horse, man. Don't worry, I got my horse. Anyways, um, long story short, I bought, I spent like two hundred and seventy dollars on new pedals for my racing rig. Wow. But let me smart. let me explain why, because I think you'll find this interesting. So basically, you're not gonna find this interesting. I'm gonna tell it to you anyways. Uh, so basically the way sim racing pedals work is that most of them, especially the budget tier that I have, they do it by position. So as in, if you push 50% of the pedal, if you push the pedal 50% of the way, then the computer reads it as 50% brake, right? Like that, that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like my pedal's nice because it has a spring behind it, a spring and a rubber stop. So the further you press, the harder it is to press, but it's still just reading position. Um, but the problem with that is that in a car, a brake is a hydraulic system, at least in like a vast majority of cars. So it's not actually reading the position of the brake pedal when you're braking in your car. It's reading how, how much pressure you're applying to the brakes. Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of money, but it's for a very good, very highly um, reviewed, what they're called load cell brake pedals, which basically read the pressure instead of the position. So it's literally reading the amount of pressure that I'm putting on the pedal to determine how much brake pressure to apply in the game. Um, and these pedals, basically people were saying like, this is like the number one upgrade that you can make as like a budget sim racer. It's 100% worth it. And like these pedals, even though you're spending a decent amount of money, they're going to last you forever. Whereas like like wheels have tiers where it's like you spend 200 bucks on a wheel, you spend 500 bucks, you spend 1,000, then you spend like 5,000. They're like, with these pedals, they're like, these pedals are like 250 bucks. As long as they're working, you're golden. You don't need any better pedals than these. Oh, that's uh, cool. Yeah. And, and I also realized, like, my rig... Okay, granted, my rig is a $400 rig, but I have only spent $150 on it. Because I spent $100 on the, the stand, and then, like I've mentioned before, the wheel I got from GameStop after trading a bunch of stuff in for, like, 50, 60 bucks. So even though I have a nice rig, I have barely spent any money on it. So I was like, I got a 24 hour race coming up. I'm having problems with this performance car because the performance car is like very sensitive to braking. And I was mm. like, I, I, I need the better pedals. So I'm happy I did that. Um, That's smart. Yeah, so I got that. I know I got some other stuff. Uh, I got Maggie some gifts. Okay, look, I want to be clear. These are going to sound slightly racist, but they are not racist. She loves them. 
And I, and I love them too. We've already started using them. Uh, yeah, Cyber, the, the Iron Horse armor is in the chest. Feel free to use it. I think it's in the weapons and armor chest. Um, okay, so I got her a really fancy Japanese rice cooker. Wait, Z Zojirushi? Yes. Nice. Um, because she had an old one that was just not great. It's not good when you can't get good rice. Um, and then I'm, I'm also, okay. Have you used a rice cooker slash cooked rice before? Yes, I have a rice cooker. Ah, okay. I'm, I'm going to describe a struggle and I want to know if you have this struggle as well with the rice cooker. Like we don't have an awful rice cooker. Now that we have a better one, we, we had a Hamilton beach one and it worked fine, but it was just so difficult. I would like do the measurements precisely where it's like one cup of rice and then it's like i think it's two to one isn't it so it's like towards it's yeah. i would get the ratio exactly as you're supposed to i would do it and it would come out either you know undercooked or overcooked and then i would um i i just i could never get it perfect and meanwhile maggie's doing it perfect and literally literally every single so glad she's in here. Every single time, she just says, put your pinky in, and when it touches your pinky, that means that's enough water. It's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> it's literally like, just put your pinky in, and when it, when it like comes a little bit to the knuckle, then it's good. And it's like, no, I try that, and it doesn't. You know, it's like so hard for me to cook rice for some reason. In a so, pot, in a rice cooker or whatever. And even with this new one, I'm still having that problem. So I will say, yes. in case you were having this issue... For, ja for rice cookers, when they say a cup, they mean a three quarters of a cup. A cup of rice is three quarters of a cup of American. Really? Yes. The rice cooker I really? have comes with a thing that marked one cup. It's and really so I quarters. said, oh, I have plenty of cups. And I kept making rice that kept coming out either crunchy or messed up. And then I oh. measured it. And yeah. the cup that it comes with that says one cup is three quarters of a cup. I don't know if it's a Japanese thing. I don't know if it's specifically a rice cooker thing, but that could be your issue is when they say one cup, they mean three quarters of a cup. That's so, probably like, what it is. Is, it the, is that the thing where like you put the rice in and then you fill it up to the marker? Uh, yeah, but I, but I was using my own measuring. Right. Cup, so I should start using their cup. So yeah, when it, when you do two cups of rice and you fill up to two, on yeah. the thing, you need two three quarters cups of rice and fill up to the two. Got it. Yeah. Cyber, I don't think we're missing a horse. I have, I have, I'm bringing the other skeletal horse over right now, putting him in the pen with the uh, sheep. To yeah, that's that fine. Sheep lesson. I, I haven't done anything with horses in this. I think he just, it was up on the mountain. Oh, okay. Oh, he found other horses. Huh. Uh, I hear Endermen and witches. I have a mob spawner under the chest now. Oh, uh, okay. That oh, there sense. is an Enderman by the portal. Should we try and take him out? No, he'll hurt us. Yeah, but if we respawn, we'll respawn right next to our dead chest. Oh, that's true. You want to do it? Yeah, where is he? He's uh, in f front of the mine entrances. Ready? Oh, yeah. Look at him. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Come on back. Nice. Good kill. Anything? I don't even think I got experience from that. Yeah, I got nothing. Flame. I need more experience because I'm trying to enchant stuff. Yeah, so there's a mob spawner under the chests. It's also uh, under the greenhouse. That was the thing I built this week. Nice. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, three quarters of a cup. That's probably your issue, to be perfect. Okay, honest. they did provide me some cups, so I'll use that. Um, yeah, because th that was kind of the whole reason why I wanted to get this rice cooker was because people were just like, this is a fantastic rice cooker. It does everything you need. It's impossible to mess it up. And I'm like, great. Like, they were literally like, it has a sensor inside to detect moisture. 
So as long as you get close to the proper ratio, it will cook it properly. And I was yeah. like, perfect. That's for me. But I I hadn't heard that. That that does. Man, I hope that's it. Yeah, that's the thing I've come across like several times. Like I've told people that and they've been like, you you fixed it. Like, it's just a weird thing. It's why, like, I mean, most people don't discover it because when the thing comes on the measuring cup, you just use the thing it came with. Yeah. Uh, Whereas me, I think I'm fancy and I'm like, oh, I don't need this. Were you just breaking glass? Yeah. No, I know, but I can hear it all the way over here. I wonder. You know, it'd be cool if the sound system was like that. Certain sounds are louder and travel far. Are you? You're not. You're not sending me your audio, are you? Oh, you know, I may be. <laughs> I may so be just, uh, from. Can you hear me? I thought. Yeah. Okay. I was. Yeah. I can't remember. Christmas games. Christmas games. That's what it was. Christmas games. Yeah, it's weird. I guess breaking glass breaks the, your voice threshold. Oh. Yeah, I could see that. I heard another thunder. Let me know if you find them and I'll come help you kill them. Oh, yep. They're over by... Oh, no. They're not. This is... Uh... Uh, Cyberlong, where are oh, you? Cyberlong. Can you check Dine Map? It's hard for me to check it. Yeah. Uh, he's behind my house. Gotcha. South of it? Uh... Yeah, south of it, yes. Common cyber. Just head towards the village. Oh, yeah, I see all the skeldies. Oh, I see some player name tags. Half hurt. I'm trying to help. Do you need some yeah. food, cyber? No, I, I got no. Oh, he's eating. Where are they? They're down the little hill. Oh, I'm down. Gosh darn it. Okay, I'm following you, Cyber. Got him. Uh, I think they're down. Oh, hey, Will, you know what I found out? What? When you die, there's a little chat message that pops up. I think it's like a slash back command that it tells you and that takes you right to your chest. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I don't know if it's slash back, but when you die, I it see. should pop I, the message. I don't know if we were allowed to do that or if it'd be cheating. Oh, I'd say go ahead and do it. It's in the mod. Control this horse. Yeah, so so what I've been doing, what I would recommend you guys do as well is, I found a whole bunch of iron. So I have iron armor, and then I also enchanted, I have a crossbow that I doubly enchanted. So we definitely have enough resources if you guys want to do that as well. For yourselves. Okay. Did I pick up something here? Oh, I picked up your lead, Cyber. Here, I'll drop it. Yeah. There you go. Enjoy. Hey, can you guys give me some dirt? Do you guys um, have any? Uh, uh, Princess Diana's dead. <laughs> Is it dirt? <laughs> That's dirt. dirt? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, I never would have guessed it. Popped in my head. <laughs> um, I have 38 dirt. Yeah, if you could just drop me like maybe half that. I just need it where for you, construction purposes. Where, where you at, girl? I'm at my greenhouse. Um, other stuff to talk about. So I did. Yes, yeah, so that was my Xmas. So I got her the rice cooker. I also got her a uh, carbon steel wok. Um, Ooh, nice. Which is a little difficult to season it because it's a little weird to season it. But once we did, it seems to be pretty, pretty good. Thanks, buddy. I wanted to get a wok, but I also want to get like one of the like actual cookers for it to go on too. I figured I'll wait till I'm more of an adult. Oh, the the round ones. 
Yeah, but you don't really yeah. need that, though, honestly. So you, you have... Don't you have... Um, you have gas, right? Yeah, but you, you want to, like... The walk stuff is, like, you want even heating. Well, yeah, but you just get a flat bottom. That's what we have, and it heats really evenly. Yeah, that's true. Um, so, that's yeah, cool. we've been using that. Um, or this village. So, yeah, so my Christmas was a lot of, like... I don't, know, I don't mean to make it sound, like, lame, but it was a lot of, like... It's more about me getting stuff for myself and, and getting nice stuff for other people. <laughs> and it was about me getting, like, yeah. really great stuff for myself. That was a surprise, in a way. Yeah. Yeah, Karen made pillows for my entire family. Oh, like, that's she made nice. made my nephew's little pillows with their names on them. She made each of the couple's pillows. She made me two subpixel pillows. Yeah. For the studio. Saw those. Those look uh, nice. Yeah. I'm pumped. Uh, and she made them reversible black on the other side, so if we don't want to show our horrendous logo. We can do that. Uh, actually, we got a pretty good logo. Although she complained because our logo in our header is different from the logo we use everywhere else. Like they're they're she said they're rounded versus the um. Oh, well, talk to Jake because he's obsessed yeah, with the style guy. Tell Jake. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I'm about the same. I, I didn't get that many other crazy things. But admittedly, I've been buying myself. A lot of stuff lately, like an Xbox Series X and a PS5. So true. Yeah, I've been I've been buying myself some stuff as well. So speaking of um, Series X, next gen, etc., let's talk about the accidental next gen exclusive title, Cyberpunk. Um, have you finished it yet? Did you say accidental next gen? Yeah, because it's it's not a next gen title, but it turns out it only runs on next gen it, it oh, basically does not run on current gen it's because i think i've talked about that, that i've i've played it a little bit on my one x and it is it's almost unplayable like too many frame rate drops it's just not good on the one x which is the the best console of last gen so it's yeah it's basically a next gen title uh, um, i have not played it uh since the 18th mm -hmm. was um, so just to say, we're not going to do heavy spoilers, but I will say that yesterday, um, I think the day before I got to that point, we talked about how there's basically a mission that says, like, hey, if you start this mission, you're going to not be able to do any other side missions or stuff. You're just going to do the remaining main missions in a row and finish the game, and then you can come back to other stuff. So there's definitely a point where they say, like, hey, this is, it's the end from here on out. Um, I reached that point, I think, on Sunday. And then Monday, I sat down and I just did the, I think it was about an hour and a half left to finish the game. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, you know. I'd like to hear from the audience as well as your thoughts, Will. We've talked about this. I kind of do want to do a spoiler show where it's me, you, and, and hopefully Kyle as well since he's played the game. And we just talk about our feelings on it because I feel like there is a lot to discuss with this game. Yeah. Um, and it would need to be going through spoilers, but uh, I, I like that idea. Do you like that idea? I like that idea. I do like that idea. I um, yeah i I haven't really felt any burning desire to go back to it. Also, I, I mean, I was at my parents for a while, and I didn't really feel like trying to play that in front of them. Um, yeah. And then also, <laughs> I bought Just Cause Four, and I was playing that, and I was just having a blast with that. Like, like the game is yeah. very stupid and very bad and looks like absolute for a series xs enhanced game looks like absolute dog crap really um it runs great it just looks awful like is it um, like not loading in well or it's like using low res textures like what it's is just it? like i don't know if it's because it's like running well now like there's constant pop in all sorts oh, of wow. stuff like it looks like the cutscenes were up res poorly <laughs> From like, uh, it looks like a 360 game. So um, that's the game. If I remember correctly, when it came out, it had like three minute load times. Yeah, it loads very fast. I will say that's good. Um, but boy, that game. I was a long time fan of the Just Cause games. Um, that game is just stupid fun, 
Yes. You can just grapple things to other things. Oh, yes, love and, it. And like, and this one has the balloons and the rockets, and you can like make things come together by mm-hmm. hitting a button. And it's just fun, and I was having a blast. So I played a lot of that. Karen played a lot of Hitman too. I pre-ordered Hitman Three today because I'm very looking forward to that. Oh yeah, I need to pre-order that. But well, actually, I don't have to pre-order it, but I am looking forward to that as well. I did myself the little deluxe edition because you know what? I like IO Interactive, and they deserve yep. more money. Hundred percent though. Um, but yeah, Cyberpunk. I have not touched. I'm meaning to go back to it. I was gonna do it today. Um, when I got home from work, but I didn't. I couldn't yesterday because I edited an entire video in about seven hours um, from concept to finish. Uh, because I about <laughs> three hours of RimWorld footage, and I sat down. I was like three o'clock at work yesterday, and I thought to myself, what I still have no idea world. how I'm gonna put this. Sorry. How I'm gonna put this video together. Yeah. Um, so I ended up doing a uh, Ken Burns Civil War documentary booth. Uh, and I think it turned out pretty good. I think I'm actually going to do uh, more RimWorld series and just stick with that motif mm-hmm. because I found thousands and thousands of great old timey photos and drawings that I think would make nice. it funny. Yeah. Um, Should so I watch I this I video? I mean, look, I'm a Disney man. You know, I usually don't watch our stuff. Don't lie to me. I will not appreciate it. Is this worth my time? I, I think the first like four minutes, first three minutes are pretty good. That's a good uh, answer. Well, I like that answer. And that and I think the credit sequence I made is really good. It's a it's only a six minute video. Yeah, I like how oh. you know me so well that like all the insults I hurled at you with that question just. Yeah. water off a duck's back you know? i would like it if you watched it because i think okay. you would appreciate it and be able to give me helpful feedback um i don't give helpful feedback i just give like mean feedback it you know honestly <laughs> that is 100 yeah. percent. no 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 you know what i i would i give i give very i give like tactless constructive feedback <laughs> i would say that i i would say it's constructive but it's not it's not put lightly. It's not well put. No. <laughs> That's what I would say. Um, um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun making it. Um, you should watch it. It's pretty Yeah, good. I will. I will. Um, but yeah, I, I would say Cyberpunk. Uh, I'd say the other thing I can tell you is once you're done with that main thing, it just dumps you out. It dumps you out right before you start that mission to end the game. And... It said, like, there's some stuff in your inventory, and I don't know. I think it was just, <laughs> like, a portion of the loot that I picked up during the final mission. But long story short, there's no... I don't think there's a good reason for you not to just do it. Yeah. Well, that's not true. I, okay, I'm going to say this. This is not a spoiler. But there are characters in that game. Characters like... Carrie and Pan Am and Johnny Silverhand. I think those are the three that have they go into side quests, but they have like their own side quest line. And if you want oh, those. Ju- yeah. And ju- and ju- yeah. Yeah. To, to an extent, there are certain choices that will be made available to you during the final mission sequence that are only going to be presented if you finish out those side quest lines. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of doing because I, I did all of Pan Am and I did all of River stuff. And I think I just need to finish Judy and then go find who this carry person is because I have no idea who they are. Yes, is. but and, and again, this I, I, I really wouldn't consider this a spoiler. This is more like a hot tip is for example, carry is just a romance option. So if they become your romance option and I believe there's only you're only allowed one in the game then they will show up as your romance option during the final mission sequence. Uh, But it will not change. But there are other characters like Pan Am that will show up as an option. So basically, like, during the final mission sequence, there's this part. I only finished the Pan Am quest line, which I was fine with. There's There's a part where they're like, hey, do you want to do this or this? Or do you want to call Pan Am for help? 
And because I chose that, it gave me a different set of mis missions to end out with. Gotcha. So I think it's Johnny and I think it's Rogue that will give you different mission options at the end. I don't think they're hugely different. That all comes to the same ending. But it's basically like, who do you call for help? And then how they choose to help slightly changes the missions. That That's based on my experience and what I read online of the different quote-unquote endings. And then it's I just, just like to... your romance option shows up. That's all. As far as the romance options, I wanted to complain. Because I, I was reading the like some of the stuff in the guidebook. And they were saying... The romance options are for specific, like if you're a male with a male voice, you can have yes. this person. Female, yeah. Which is okay. I'm not I'm not saying every character in every video game should be able to have sex with anyone because yeah. that's not a character you've made a, a F doll. But what I will say is I think it's important if your character is interacting with another character that and your character is allowed to say sexy things to that character like my female character was able to say to say pan am who is only allowed to be with the male one that i think that character should at some point voice that they are not interested and that they would like to remain friends like wait they, character you mean player character no i think the like so i thought throughout the, all the missions with pan am that i could end up with a relate in a relationship with her. i think I you i think character. you can't because it, uh, i i want to double check this but of the list of romance options some of them are bisexual as in whether you're male right. or female you can end up with them i for example like i think carrie you can only end up with carrie if you're female or no maybe if you... no i'm pretty sure it's male yeah i think it's male but but i think pan am is is either but i i, I think you just you're saying you didn't get a romance option with her? No, I did not get a romance option with her. But the guidebook says you can't as a female. Oh, really? But I'm saying the game doesn't tell you that in any sort of way. Yeah, it'd be nice if the character was like, hey, sorry, I don't swing that way. I play for right, the other team. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I would be totally fine with that. But they don't. And it, it keeps letting my character say weird things. Oh. That makes me think, oh, I do then have a chance with this person. Like, the gamer yeah. in me thinks that, not the human I'm trying to play as. Gotcha. Um, that's why I thought it was weird that you just... Like, they don't really press that. Anyways, that's not big. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Do you go to space at some point? Okay, that's all I need. I... It's my understanding that in some of the endings... There are cutscenes that take place in space. Okay. That is it. Because someone on my Twitter feed finished the game and they posted some of their screenshots and there was a picture of space. And I was like, it's that? I was like, either that's the end of the game or that's some side mission I missed or something. But yeah. I, from what I read about possible endings, I believe one of them has um, like a space cutscene element to it. Oh, okay. I need I need more hay. I need this hay to grow faster. So my house is almost done, but then I need to figure out where windows go because I, I really don't. It's kind of ugly right now. I think we gotta get rid of that middle. Um, but yeah, because I, I would like to have an extended discussion because I'm curious to hear what Kyle has to say because I believe he said his playtime was what like sixty or seventy hours, something like that. And I just like 32 in. I just I cannot put that much time into that game. I'm sorry, but it ain't happening. You know? Yeah, I I I really uh, I think I'm only gonna boot it up to finish. Yeah, and you've only got about 90 minutes to go. Um so I I not that I want to have like a a 1v1, but I would I would really like to talk to somebody who is put that much time into the game because i i'm assuming they're enjoying it a lot more than i am <sighs> i think i've done a fair bit of the side content too yeah i could see that the side quest what's your total play time right now i want to say it's like 32 or 34 hours yeah i could see that because i f i finished at 22 i was i was not doing any of the side quests that i was not interested in which was a majority of them 
Yeah, like I was doing the pan, like the River Ward stuff because I was into him, and then the Pan Am stuff. Yeah. But really, other than that, I didn't. I guess I did all the Delamain stuff because I'm an idiot. Yeah, that that I I like that. I wasn't crazy about the end, but I like Delamain as a character, and so I wanted to go through with that. Did you like the portal robot? That was. I thought it was a good reference. You know, they kind of set up where they're like, they're like doing different things with each of those. But I was like, did you? Is this? Did you get permission? Yeah. <laughs> is this? What? How? How? higher i need to get higher um yeah i'm trying to think what other i've done a lot of gigs uh oh i did the whole uh oh those, I... those rich people the mayor stuff oh uh... side side thing you know let's stop talking about this because i feel like yeah we're getting a bit deep but also i want to talk more yeah about the stuff you're raising and i don't want to start introducing spoilers yeah but yeah we should definitely because because i i you know that whole mayor thing i don't even know what you're talking about with the mayor thing i think there was like a hint of it somewhere but i think i just completely ignored that so i'm curious to to see what i missed you know yeah um but yeah i, I just wanted to say i finished that i i really wanted to finish it on monday because on monday i Happened to take delivery of one PlayStation Fizzle. That's right, I got my PlayStation 5 on Monday, which it was uh, it was kind of in, kind of uh, unexpected because I placed the order a couple weeks ago through Walmart. They it was kind of weird because they had a drop, but they were like, "You're gonna order these PS5s, but they're all gonna be kind of back order." You know, we don't know when we're going to get these in stock. The estimate was January 9th for delivery. And I got it. What is that? The 28th? December 28th? So I basically got it like 11 days early, I think, if I'm doing the math right. So so that was nice. Um, and I wanted to just be done with Cyberpunk. I was like, I, I, I want to finish this game. So let me just get it done with so that I can just move on cleanly to the PlayStation 5. Um, so first impressions of this console, I thought about streaming it, but honestly, that stream we did previously on the, um, Series X, it, it, it wasn't that crazy of a first impression stream. Plus there's all sorts of first impressions already up there. Um, the setup, not as easy as the Xbox Series X. If you remember the Series X setup was literally just like, um, log into your account and then it literally just takes your Xbox One settings. So it just boots the dash and it looks identical. <laughs> and if, I, if mm -hmm. I remember correctly, I think it I think it cues most of the apps you already have to download as well. Yeah. So you're just like you're just like done. And and as somewhat anticlimactic as that is in terms of you got a brand new console and it looks identical to the old one, it was nice and easy. But the PlayStation was like it was a little wonky. And then you get into this interface. You're not really sure what the interface is. But uh, but I got through that. And... Um, yeah. So I played... Okay, let's talk about the controller. Controller feels great. And I'll tell you why it feels great. Because it's much closer to the Xbox controller than it is the DualShock 4, right? Yeah, the DualShock 4. Uh, and let me tell you something, that's fantastic, because I've never really enjoyed the PlayStation controllers. I didn't like their analog layout. I didn't like the, the feel, the palm feel of it. The Xbox controller is incredible, and the PlayStation 5 controller is very similar to it. Um, the buttons are clear plastic, like clear plastic with the symbol underneath showing through. And I actually kind of like the feel. I didn't expect to like that glossy feel, but I do. Um, so I think that's a good segue into talking about Astro's Playroom. Which is the... Uh, 
uh, pack-in game for the PlayStation 5 and is also kind of a tech demo for the controller. The game was... I, I beat the game. It didn't take long. It was maybe only like... I'm going to say four hours total. Because there's not a whole lot to it. Well, there's a lot of collectibles, but to just do like the main line. It's kind of like a platformer game. That game is great. It, it's... I, I enjoyed it so much. Um, yeah. It was a lot of fun. It has a whole lot of PlayStation homages. So, like, you'll be, like, going around a level and you'll see, like, other little Astrobots in the, in the corner, like, acting out a scene from other video games. And then there's a guy, there's a cameraman with a PlayStation camera, like, recording them. Hmm. So, they'll, so they'll be in the corner, like, um... I'm trying to think of some. One of them was like, was like, uh, an Astrobot, and then like a smaller Astrobot next to him, and they're dressed up as Joel and Ellie from Last of Us, and they're hiding around a corner, and then there's like a, another Astrobot with like the, whatever the popcorn, zombie stuff oh, on his head is. Yeah. And there's like one with God of War. There's one where it's like guy, Dante dressed up from Devil May Cry, and they're just like little tiny details in each level. It loads fast. It looks great in 4K HDR. Um. It's just got a lot of like creative gameplay mechanics and it really showcases the controller. And I just, I loved it. Um, so yeah, the controller, the controller, whoo doggy, the controller. All right, so the key, the key things about this controller, well, I know you already know this, but this is like refresher for people at home. It has, um, it basically has HD rumble. Kind of the promise that Nintendo had when the Switch launched. It's like high definition rumble that they're incorporating in a lot of games. It has adaptive triggers where basically the triggers, they can change um, the tension of the triggers as in how far, how hard it is to press them. And they can also add a soft lock as in you press halfway down, you hit a barrier and then you have to press harder to get through it. And then there's rumble in the triggers, which I, I don't think the DualShock 4 had rumble in the triggers, did it? Uh, I didn't play enough to remember that. Whereas I think the Xbox One does have rumble in the triggers. Um, so, basically, the controller... The other thing is the controller has a speaker in it, which the DualShock 4 had a speaker in it as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. But it was not very well used or not widely used. Um... Astrobot is like, like the whole game is designed around the controller. In a way, so there are, there's a lot of missions or levels where they want you to tilt the controller or mechanics where you have to blow on the controller. Um, they have like bow and arrow where you have to squeeze the controller. They're constantly using rumble, constantly using the um, speaker on the controller. So for example, like if you're Characters, as your character's walking, you hear his footsteps through the controller speaker, and you get a slight rumble. Like, if it's on sand, then it's kind of like a crunchy, light rumble. If it's across, like, ice, then it's like a very, like, intense but sharp, short rumble. So it's like a... Oh. Um, I was... Honestly, the controller is the number one reason why I bought this console so early. Because hearing the reviews and people say things about it, it, it got me very excited. But, I think the controller's good. But I, it, it just feels like... It feels a lot like the Switch's rumble. Like, you remember 1-2... Did you ever play 1-2 Switch? Yeah. First of all, not a great game. Second of all, no. should have been a pack-in. Third of all... The games where it used the rumble, like the one where you're guessing how many balls are in the box, like that was Three. good. That was a good use of the rumble, right? It's it's a lot like that, where there are good uses of the rumble, and there's good uses of the controller sound, the controller speaker, but it doesn't necessarily feel like it is a revolutionary hardware change in terms of rumble and speaker. It's just that they're using it better. Well, yeah. In terms of 
like the game designers are fully implementing that hardware. Um, the triggers, on the other hand, the triggers feel awesome. I think the triggers are the are the real revolution. Um, and I say that because the way they're able to manipulate the triggers. It just feels great. So I'll give you an example. There's a there's a gotcha machine in Astrobot that as you collect coins through the levels, you can then go back to the hub world and spend it in the gotcha machine. Gotcha. And there's there's two levers. So it's like a first person view, you're a robot and you're grabbing the gotcha machine. Two levers. Lever on the left hand side, you pull it to buy a capsule, and it pops out. And and sorry, the second one's not a lever, but it's just your hand. And the capsule lands in your hand, and then you squeeze the capsule to crush it and find what's oh, inside. Oh, I like that. I love it so much because you're using the two triggers. So you, so it's like it's like a soft pull, and then you feel the wall, and then you have to clunk through the wall to actually pull the lever to buy. And then and then you end up with a capsule in your hand. And then for the other trigger, you squeeze it and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter, and it's like kick, 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 kick. And it's just so good, Will. It feels <laughs> so good. I just, I want to do that all day long. Just a crunch. Just a king crunch. It feels really, really, really good. Um, there is the downside, though. So I finished Astrobot. Fantastic game. Great pack in, great demonstration of the controller. Started playing Bug Snacks. Also, really enjoying Bug Snacks. It uses almost none of that. It has just like generic rumble, and then it uses the controller speaker for basically the little creatures when you get near them. When you pick them up or you feed them, they say their name through the controller. So it's like, Swabby! And so you hear it from your controller, Swabby! Swabby! Bunger! Bunger! You know, and it's it's funny, but that's the only way they're using the controller in a way. I mean, I guess I wonder if the PS4 has that speaker as integration as well, because there's there's nothing yeah. PS5 ish about the integration. Because it, it it just happens to be on PS5, right? It's not a it's not a launch game. So I got it because it's free on PlayStation Plus, and I, you know, that's a good. That's a good point, Will. I didn't even check if I'm playing the PS5 version. Because that's another problem with Sony is... Oh, yeah. They don't make it clear if you're downloading a PS4 well, or PS5 it, version. It wasn't free on PS4 Plus. It was only free on PS5 Plus. Yes, that's that's the other thing. It's only free for PlayStation Plus on PS5, even though it's a PS4, yeah. PS5 But I game. wonder if, if the devs, when making the game, Sony was like, hey, we're just going to put this on the PS5. Don't yeah. worry about it. And they didn't have them do anything yeah i'm not sure so that's why i'm excited to play um miles morales and to play um to play uh cold war these games that i know have implementations for the controller and the trigger i'm just worried this is going to be something like hd rumble and the nintendo switch where it's like yeah it's great when it's designed for and implemented as part of a mechanic but 99 percent of games are going to ignore it yeah so uh, astrobot fantastic game can't say that enough um so yeah i'm glad I, i'm glad i have the console though it's enormous it's 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 really big it's also, I, do you remember the video they came out with where they were talking about the stand and they're like, this is the teardown. And they talked about how this, this is how you attach and detach the stand. Yeah. So I thought that was a good design for the stand because even though you have to screw it and unscrew it, they have mechanisms inside to keep the screw and to keep like a cover inside the stand when you're not using it. And I'm like, that's great. That's great stuff. Um, the stand sucks though. And I'll tell you why I have to have it horizontal because of my entertainment system. And when you have the stand horizontal, it is not attached to the console. So like, oh. I'll give you an example. I, I plugged the HDMI in and I didn't realize I didn't have it plugged all the way in. So I have the console on the stand in the, in the entertainment center. And I go to slide the console out 
just far enough to check the HDMI cord. And by grabbing the console and sliding it out, it comes off the stand. And then I try to put it back on the stand and I can't put it back on the stand because the, st the stand's just moving around. It doesn't lock into place or anything like that. Yeah. So then I had to pull the whole console out, pull the stand out, put the stand back on, and then hold the stand and the console and put it back in the in the entertainment system. So you you basically you can't slide that console out. If you slide that console, it's coming off the stand. So you got to take it all the way out. It's Ooh. it's it sucks. Um, that may sound like a minor gripe, but I tell you what, when you're setting up a brand new five hundred dollar next gen console, you don't want to be cursing at the stand. Yeah, the stand's an okay book. Uh, I haven't read it. Um, it's a, it's a Dark, have you read the Dark Tower series? I've only read the first one. Mm. Well, we've had this discussion. Before. Yeah, don't read anymore. They get much worse after yeah. that. First one's good. I, li I, I like the first one, yeah. Yeah, then they get real bad. I feel, like, I feel like that man just needed a place to put all of his <laughs> bad stuff. And it ended up being the Dark Tower series. <laughs> yeah. I could like see you know, it's like any any artist when they're like, "Oh, this one's my passion project." You're like, and oh, it's always no. like, "Oh, it's it's oh, it really was your passion." Like I feel like that happens nine times out of ten when something someone's passion project it's going to be worse than everything else they do. Yeah, like Wonder Woman. Hey, I have that on the list of things to talk about. But anyways, PS5. So I'm gonna play some Bug Snacks. I'm doing this thing where I'm giving myself a game at a time in a way. So, like, I had Astrobot, I finished that. Then I got Bug Snacks, I finished that. I have PS Plus, which means I technically have access to Bloodborne, but I think I'm going to sit on that for a little bit. Um, and I'm either going to play... I think I'm going to play Call of Duty next, because it's on sale right now. Which is weird. It's weird that the new Call of Duty is on sale, because normally those games oh, never go on sale. I think it's, like, 20 bucks off right now. Um... So yeah, I think graphical fidelity and the triggers, fantastic. The UI is definitely a little wonky. Hardware is a little wonky. And I'm worried about how many people are actually going to use that controller to its full potential. But I'm, I'm excited to keep playing that, that system. Um, is it time to talk about Wonder Woman 1984? Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen it. I don't want to say... I want... Do you have any interest in watching it? I walked really far away. Uh, I have zero interest in ever oh, seeing okay. it, ever. Did you see the first one? Um, no, I have also zero interest in ever seeing oh, okay. that, ever. The first also, one... Patty Jenkins needs to be removed from the Rogue Squadron movie. Because Why? Because she she's a woman? <laughs> no, did you see all that stuff? No, where people... They're like, like, Patty Jenkins can't direct Rogue Squadron now because she made a bad movie. She's clearly not a good director. They're trying oh, to call in Trevorrow, Patty Jenkins. Anyways. It's like people have <laughs> seem to not realize directors can make bad movies and yeah. also make good movies. But to be fair, I was a little worried. I went on IMDb after I watched Wonder Woman 1984. And I was like, I'm a little worried about um, Rogue Squadron. And I was like, well, let me let me just let's go see what. How involved was she in this movie? Like, I knew she was the director. And she has, like... I think she has story and writing credit on it. And I was like, oh, no. Oh, Patty, yeah. no. I was like, you you share a lot of this blame. But the problem, too, is, like, you don't know how much, like, any creative team at DC got involved with that sort of stuff. Yeah, but, but I will say, if somebody's watched the movie, a lot of it is just, like writing there's a lot of like wonky stuff in there like characters doing weird things there's a lot of i don't i don't really want to call them plot holes but just like nonsensical stuff and it's just like yeah but is she writing rogue squadron or just direct i don't know i don't know but at the same time it's kind of like Zack snyder where i think one of i think Zack snyder's biggest fault biggest flaw is that he i don't think he judges writing well you know, like, even in movies that he is, like, he wrote Sucker Punch, Sucker Punch, not great writing. Looks great, not great writing. And then he did, um, well, he did Man of Steel. Yeah, he did Man of Steel. He didn't write Man of Steel, but Man of Steel has some wonky writing in it. And I think he just didn't recognize the writing, the bad writing. 
So I think. Yeah. But I, that's, I mean, as someone who has worked in the film industry, mm-hmm. not necessarily the director who changes the writing on the spot. Yes. But, but I think I would just say, if you're the director, you have enough power to be like, Hey, let's sit down and talk about the scene. That doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? And if you're not doing that, I'm not saying it's your fault completely, but that speaks to maybe you didn't realize it was a problem. Yeah. And that, that makes me worried. And so that, that's my kind of my worry with Patty Jenkins is even she's not writing rogue squadron. If somebody comes to her with a badly written scene, she may not be able to recognize it. Yeah, I think it's okay for you to be worried or express concern. I don't think it's okay for people to request the firing of a person for one thing because of another thing. Yeah, that's in that's a in a non team. non violent non harmful situation like that. Yeah. Obviously, if something was horrible, like she murdered someone, then that she would murdered be someone. <laughs> Yes, she murdered Wonder Woman. She oh my God! Um, she needs to come off the movie then, like clearly. Yeah, clearly. Clearly. Um, yeah. So I, I, Wonder Woman is just like okay. First of all, I was really excited to watch this movie just because I wanted to give HBO Max props for just being like, "Hey, you, you're doing the smart move, not having this be tied to theaters right now." And in general, like streaming is the future. I like movie theaters, but we don't need to slavishly stick to them 100% like, you know, certain auteurs will only make movies on film. We don't need to do that anymore. And and I want it to be there in like their day one stats to be like, yeah, push the movie, do it. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and, And I thought the first one was okay. I wasn't crazy about it. I think a lot of it was... Does it count as Stockholm Syndrome? I think it's like Boiling Frog Syndrome. Maybe. I don't think that's right either. Where basically all the DC movies have been really bad. And all of a sudden Wonder Woman comes out. And it's not that bad. It's like, (laughs) okay. And you're just like, I I think I liked that. And you know, and all of a sudden you just like swing the opposite way. There's got to be some some sentiment for that. Um, Confirmation bias? That's not confirmation. No, it's kind of like... It's like you're surrounded by bad things, so you automatically look better in comparison. It's like the ugly girl syndrome from... Yeah. Uh, what's that from? I don't remember. Um, They're all ugly, but together they become beautiful. Yeah. So so it was like... How's chat, by the way? Nobody? Uh, Nothing. Sounds about right. Everyone hates us. Um, so... It was, so I was fine with the first one, and I, and I was like, all right, yeah, let's watch the second one. Like, Maggie couldn't stop crying in the first one. Was it sad? Not really. I think she was just happy to see, if, like, a female's, I, I, don't, I don't, I think she just bought into, like, the, the women empowerment story a lot. Ugh, gross. Right? Um, and so, like, I know she really wanted to watch it, and I was like, hey, Christmas... It's just the two of us. We'll do presents. We'll do dinner, and then we'll watch, you know, um, Wonder Woman. So I was ready for it. I was like, "Bring it." Not good. It's it starts out okay, and then it just starts getting weirder. It uh, weirder and weirder, as in it starts just making weirder and weirder storytelling choices until it gets to this point where you're like, "I don't want to watch this movie anymore. I'm not invested at all." And then like, there's some like really bad choices that around like i don't know if you've read it about around like sexual consent like problems that this movie brings up and it's like like not intentionally like basically wonder woman kind of rapes a guy oh no and that is it's not really an exaggeration and it's like like, it was weird when we were seeing it, and now there's articles coming out being like, this is very problematic. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. You want me to tell you what it is? Yeah. Uh, just a quick aside. Is the... Oh, someone said you are not allowed to say the R word. Rape? Is the R word rape? I, we couldn't... So I joined the... the we're Rimworld discussing Discord it nicely. Server. Yeah. We The Remore Discord, and it said no use of the R word. 
like it specified that and chris and i couldn't decide if it was rape or like i thought maybe he thought maybe retard which it's I probably see. it's probably retard because i forget you're from massachusetts you're not allowed to say that word anymore oh I, you guys are like the whole no, but i meant you I guys meant are like to slow down you guys are like the french and cigarettes <laughs> <laughs> you know it's really true but uh oh. no but i oh. I don't know. Anyways, that just came up today. Yeah. Also, I just found crying obsidian and it's dripping. It's weird. You should look it up. Oh, I did find a fortress if you guys want to do that eventually. I found a it is a stone pillar from it hanging a broken nether portal with netherrack everywhere. Oh, it's probably yeah, broken nether portals are a new thing in the overworld. Weird. Anyway, um, uh, yeah, so, so the Wonder Woman see. thing is, that, and this is really isn't a spoiler. This is just detailing some stuff that we saw in the trailers. So Chris Pine, her love interest, comes back. But he comes back. He doesn't come back as himself. He comes back in somebody else's body, like Quantum Leap style, right? Oh, no. But the thing is, they're just like, hey, isn't it funny? I'm this other guy. Oh, look at his apartment. Look at his weird clothing. Hey, let's have uh, let's have sex in his bed several times. And it's uh... like, and and like Maggie and I were like, this is really weird that they're kind of just doing it in this guy's body. And then there's all the articles being like, they basically like had non-consensual. One of them had non-consensual sex with this man's body. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, yeah, it was pretty messed up. Um, and it's what like, the heck, Wonder Woman. yeah, it was like, what is happening? Um, so it's definitely a wonky movie. And that's just an example of one thing where in a movie that's all about female empowerment, they suddenly have this thing where it's like, basically Wonder Woman raped, raped somebody. And it's like, what is happening? Um, <gasps> Oh, I found Lantern. So yeah, pretty wonky movie. Um, what else was on my list to talk about? Oh my god, that's it. That's all I have on my there. list. Oh, I do. I do have one thing I want to talk about. I I need to say thank you for introducing me to Taskmaster. <gasps> I'm enjoying it. Really enjoying that's it. Very good. And you know what? The other thing was, like, I knew I knew Maggie would like it, right? And I'm always looking for shows that we can watch together while eating because, um, you know, she wants to watch one thing. I want to watch one thing. And I'm like, well, let's, you know, like, we watched Dragon Ball Z together. It was perfect. It was like, sit down. We don't have to go through. We don't have to argue. It's like, this is the show that we watch together. Yeah. And I was like, she's going to like Taskmaster. And she was like, I don't want to. I don't want to. So then I watched, like, the entire first season. And she was like occasionally listening, but then mostly just being like, I don't want to watch this. I was like, fine. And then <laughs> this morning, I, I think it was either this morning or last night, I put an episode on. She didn't complain at all and she wouldn't stop laughing. And we watched like four episodes today. So oh, I'm so happy. We got Maggie as well. It's it's oh, it's a good show. It's a great show. You can, yeah. you can thank Chris for it. He's the one who got me on it. I, I had, It was one of those things where I didn't realize it was more of a panel show. If I had known yeah. that, I would have watched it a long time ago. I just, like, I love British panel shows. I just never have, had heard of it before. Yeah. Yeah, I like uh, panel shows, too. Yeah, we're on season five. and uh, I think I'm almost done with two. Five. How many is it? Good. Is it ten total seasons? I think they're on eleven now. So there's, so Chris showed me to get me into it. Uh, there's a Christmas special uh, that is the Champion of Champions, where they have the five oh. winners of the first five series. Oh my god! So that was the first one I ever watched, and it's a two episode thing. So the first five series, I know who the winner is <laughs> from the uh, get go. But that doesn't really which matter. Which doesn't really matter. It's kind of actually yeah. more fun to see it that way. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I'm oh, I'm so happy you like it. it. It's so good. It's great. It's great. Um, man, I found this winter village, and they have someone just shoot at me. They have a, they have lanterns everywhere, so I'm stealing all their lanterns. Yes, that sounds great. And all their shacks are made of the uh, stripped spruce. Oh yeah, because I, I I looked it up, but I 
we we couldn't find out how to craft that right so maybe it is just a yeah, world item so I think I think uh, if you go to the log splitter or grinder or something. Villagers sell lanterns. That's what. Uh... Yeah, I don't care if they sell them. I'm just stealing all of them. <laughs> There's so many. Um, yeah, Taskmaster, very good. Uh, we've been watching. We, yeah, like the other night, Karen was like, "Do you want to watch a movie?" I'm like, "Not really." She's like, "Do you want to watch like three episodes of Taskmaster?" I'm like, like yeah, "Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please." It's just like, because you, like, we have a rule, not really a rule, but like when we watch movies, we put our phones down. Like, the only time we check our we phones try, is like, try hey. To. No, no, but we actually keep them Wait down. Wait a minute, like, Cyber says use the use button on a lock. What? What's the, the use button? What's the, what's the use button? E? Place block? Right, yeah, I, I just see it as right button, but that's not. Yeah, that doesn't work for me. Doesn't you have to work. have an empty hand? Oh, I wonder if it has to be spruce. Oh, it has to be a pickaxe. Or, I mean, an axe. Use an axe on a log. But you can't undo it. Oh. That's cool. That's pretty. That makes sense. Um, um, anyways, yeah. we have a rule where we don't look at phones. The only exception is like if we see someone in the movie and we're like, it's going to bother us if we don't know what they're from. We're like, someone will look it up like the person or whatever. Oh, hey, just um, real quick while you're on that. I want to give a shout out to the Amazon Prime app. Have you used that before? Amazon Prime video app? No. They do this thing where if you hit the pause button while you're watching something, It'll just like pop up the pause menu, etc. And then it pops up along the bottom of the screen, William, the actors who are in that scene and the character names that they play. Oh. It is amazing. That is very cool. It is crazy good. I'm very into that. I saw that. I was like, this is the greatest thing I've ever seen. And I actually like use it a lot. Like when I'm watching like The Expanse and I'm like, why does that guy look familiar? And then I pop it. I'm like, oh, oh it's that guy. Or like, I grabbed my. Um, just the other day, uh, Maggie was watching something on Stars using the Amazon app, and um, this guy came on, and I was like, oh, do you recognize who that is? She's like, no. And she hit the pause button, and it showed his like headshot, and that made it easier for her to see that it was a guy from Rome, the TV show. Oh. And like. You know, because we saw its headshot. Sorry, you were saying something? Stupid. No, I was just going to mention, you said Expanse. I, I grabbed my Expanse books from my parents' house because I thought, oh, maybe I'll reread the Expanse and then, like, watch the show or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but I forgot one of the books, and I'm upset. Shit. Like, it gives me anxiety because I'm like, I don't want to start it because what if I can't get the book here by the time I get to it? Anyways, it's a separate issue. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, um, yeah, Taskmaster's good. I'm trying to think if we watched any other movies lately. Um, Karen watched Saw the other day without me. Is that any good? Um, she said it was actually pretty good. Yeah, I've heard the originals good, and then the rest of it's just, like, franchise stuff. You know. Yeah. I found another nether portal. Oh my gosh, this nether portal box is full of golden leggings, golden armor, golden axe, golden horse armor, golden gl glistening melons. Nice. Take it all, baby. I am. I'm going to spawn home in a second. I got to go to bed. Soon. Wait. Oh, a in real world? In real world. Ugh, we're not going to stay up. I'm, I'm like... I've shifted my bedtime for a holiday. I may be up for a while. Maggie's not home work. either, so. I got work tomorrow. I don't care. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. Ooh, you know, Cyber, I'll look it up for Bee Farm. If you want to bring me some, if you want to start bringing bee stuff as you guys come across it, I'll, I'll oh, look it up. Yeah. I may put the bee stuff outside. I was going to use this for flowers, but I could totally do both. Let me look up what a bee farm would look like. I like that idea, though. I want to check the map and see how far away I got. Wow, I'm very far away. 
Oh, Cyber's coming behind me. Excuse me. I said Cyber's coming behind me. Ian, look at the map. Look how far away. Let me, let me pull it up. Was that the village I discovered over there? Is that a different village? What's oh, a different village? Oh, yeah, you there. went as far south as. Yeah. Yeah, it's a different village. Yeah, I'm going to that one, stealing more lanterns. Yeah, it is pretty far. Great job, Goofer. Thanks. Actually, tomorrow should be pretty relaxing because uh, it is a shoot day at work. So it means I get to just kind of sit there. Let's get to shoot people. Yeah. Great. Go to all these la rallies. Oh. I'm trying to think about any anything else to talk about. Oh, I, I, um, I, that you sent me that rogue thing. I downloaded that. That stuff looks kind of cool. Yeah, I just saw that. I have a huge folder of every time I come across a cool looking roguelike, uh, either on the subreddit or in the Discord, I just download it, like the latest version, and put it in a folder. So, yeah. I have so many that I just want to, like, sit down and try a bunch. Um, because there's some really like neat ones there's a cool one i saw a while ago where you're like fighting you're like fighting in the civil war or something like it's like a civil war roguelike but you're controlling armies oh that does sound kind of wonky it's interesting um yeah because i was doing some research into rogue um like making of history of yeah. And I was looking at a bunch of different stuff. And then today I was I went on a little train of uh Rimworld mods because there's a couple that like give you like you can make a big spaceship and then fly into space and fight other spaceships and make like a giant space station. Oh. And sort of stuff. The modding community is um very, very active. Or That's Rimworld. Cool. Mostly because uh, I don't think the developer's lazy, because that is not the term I would use that some mm -hmm. other people would use, but they are just like, their updates don't come out as often, and I feel like thousands of people who really love your game are a lot better at, not a lot better at, but can more quickly make random content than you could ever yeah. hope Plus, to. I, I don't mean to say this is the case with RimWorld, but there are plenty of games, like, for example, Minecraft, where the developer's don't necessarily know the right direction to take the game and modders yeah. have a better idea of that. Yeah, um, totally. And it, it gives them a chance. Like it's not the developer mod uh, saying which way the game's going. It's you have a bunch of different mods. And then it even gives the developer time to be like, Hey, people really like this aspect of our game. That's not in it. Yeah. So let's incorporate that. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Hello, sir. Just stealing your lamp. Thank you. Um, I have continued to watch The Sopranos. Still a great show. Oh, yeah. Who else? Someone else? Oh, I think Mike Mahardy's watching it. I keep seeing his tweets. Yeah, I think he's watched it like three or four times. It's just a solid yeah, show, it, you know? Really? It doesn't interest me in the slightest. Oh, yeah, but I'm we like, discussed this. Show. But you said that you like gangster movies, and it's like, it's basically like the ultimate gangster movie. Yeah, but I think, like, the setting. Uh, oh, of, of like, North Jersey? Like, North Jersey and, like... Yeah, but you know, know what? I You're not Is from... Like, the 80s, 90s? No, it's, it's quote-unquote, present day. So it's, like, 99 through, I think, yeah, 2005, see, 2006. Yeah, that doesn't interest me. But, okay, here's the thing, though. I would say you are a transplant to Jersey. So this is, like... Like, when I went to Lebanon, I watched a lot of Lebanese movies to understand the Doesn't culture mean. and recognize Listen, the areas. We understand and stuff. your porn addiction. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so like, I would recommend watching this as a good, like, uh, Jersey. I, I'm not saying it's, like, super accurate, but it definitely deep dives into Jersey culture. Jersey Italian culture. Yeah. Uh, don't care. Yeah. 
it's it, it's also just like solid you know i'm sure i would like it it's just like yeah i would like it it just sounds so utterly boring and stupid to me no it's it's good it's just well done television you know half this village is on top of a mountain yeah village placement is like hilarious in terms of how wonky it ends up being how am i gonna get it what's your uh you know let's do this is an actual like server check-in so you got any any unrealized goals for this server uh i want to finish my house and then I currently have no plans for after that. I, I keep. I think I might start building a castle somewhere, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe a village to go along with the castle. But I also might just find another. So this village is in the snow, which I like. But I might find another snow village, like wall it off and pretty it up, and then build a castle and govern my people. Yeah. So that's kind of my current goal is I, I just need enough hay to finish my roof. And then I, I need to mess with the windows because I really don't know what I want uh, with them yet. And then once all that is settled, then I can work on castles. I really like building castles. Why don't you build it on? There's a slightly snow mountain southwest of town. I don't want to pigeonhole you, but I think it'd be cooler if it's near town because then everybody sees it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine with me. I'm just stealing. I'm almost done stealing all these lanterns. I gotta decide what I'm gonna build after the. You know what? Actually, I want to do next. I because of the Nether update, I want to go build a Nether base because there is some Nether stuff I need. I've always been terrified of the Nether, and I think it's time for me oh, to actually smart. conquer that. How do I get back home again? It's slash. Yes, slash home. Slash home. Did that work? Uh, I'm about to. Hey. Yeah, so Cyberlong. So I think I think I'm just gonna start by building a safe house around the portal. So slash like... home sent me to the last bed I slept in. Uh, can you do slash spawn? No. Oh, you know, we had this problem last time. It's because you never did slash set home. No, because last time I did slash home and it brought me to the spawn. Well, I mean... But this, so the last bed I slept in, it was nighttime and it said you've set your new spawn point. So I yeah, but didn't, didn't it always say that? Because it doesn't do that for me. Yeah, like, I'm... like if I do slash home. It, oh, you know what? It is taking me to the bed now. So, do you want to come home? Uh, yeah, I would like to. TP you want to TP me? To seventy to here. There you go. Thank Yeah, so I guess. I guess it is changing. Set home. I thought it wasn't changing that. I don't know. Oh, what do you think about my uh what do you think about my my greenhouse? I think like I think it needs some lanterns on it. Yeah, if you want to do some lanterns. Oh, you gonna hang lanterns? Well you can hang them off uh, fence posts. Oh, lanterns just nine iron nuggets and a torch. That's not that bad. Yeah. Ooh, so many. Oh, it's a chain block. Is it a Dang chain it. block? Oh my god, my little planters look so good. Wow. Oh wait, I don't Oh man. Um 
Oh, there are chains. Oh, this is hot. Wait, how'd, how'd you find chains? I'm just finding chain. Oh, wait, I just found. It. Never mind. Yeah, it's like invisible. Oh yeah, nugget. Oh, My house is gonna look so good now. Uh, oh, I'm gonna hang those over the fire. Oh yeah, I'm gonna hang hang from the ceiling too. The corpses. Oh no, I could do it like a double decker greenhouse. I could have some hanging oh. from the ceiling. Oh. Smart, smart, smart. Um, fart, crap, fart, fart. I was gonna say something. <gasps> oh my goodness! I what have. What were we a... talking about before? Uh... The sheep right here. I need. I need. The sheep. Sheep take wheat. Sheep take wheat. Pope shit in the woods. Do you have wheat? Uh, no. I just want to lure a sheep over because. I don't have two sheep. Oh, here we go. I got some. Bang them. Do you want some golden enchanted leggings? No, I got iron. I'm all good. Uh, I'm Where'd you go, sheep? Come here. Them, Come here. Okay. Uh, I think I think I might go to bed. Huh? You disgust me. I know. Oh, I'm on the last Dune book, or at least the last book, um, before the author died. This is nice. Yeah, that you know that story. It's wonky, but I, I gotta admit it goes some places, which is great stuff. Come on, sheep. Come on. Come on, sheep. I'm just like not interested. Come on. Oh wait, Cyber. What does what does gold armor do for you? Yeah, why do you want gold armor in the nether? Make babies, please. Babies have been made. Oh, they don't attack you if you have gold armor. Okay. This has been a fun stream, but I have to go to bed. Okay, folks, um, thank you guys so much for joining us. We're going to be back on Thursday. Thursday is New Year's Eve, and you're at home. Because that's the safe thing to do. But we're at home yeah. with you. We're going to be playing some Jackbox. If you want to play Jackbox with us, just join our community Discord. We've got the link uh, down below in the, in the video description. Folks, we're going to be playing Jackbox. If you want to join... Got to be in the community Discord. We'll put the room codes in there. If you want to just watch, we'll be streaming 9 p.m. Eastern on Twitch. You can find me on Twitch at ThinkGibson. You can find Will on Twitch at Hunt270. And you can find Subpixel at subpixelfilms.com. That's where you're going to find our YouTube channel with all of our stream archives and plenty of content like Will's fantastic room world video that he put up just yesterday that I will watch, I promise, at least the first four minutes of. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitch at Subpixel Team. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Will, thank you for joining us. Ian, thank you for hosting. Anytime. We'll see y'all on the flippity flop. Bye-bye.